All right, guys. So in the last episode of this, you know, series or the second last episode of this series, I want to introduce you to a concept called ocean, right? And let's just get to it, actually. So uh, the ocean or the big five, it's a theory that says that there are five traits that you can use to categorize human beings. Now, I believe that human beings are multidimensional, right? It's not just five things that dis- define us. It's many, many, many different things. But if somebody wants to manage people who wants to have a boilerplate or something very simple, a simpler way to kind of account for people. And this is not to say that humans are not more complex than this. We are. We're extremely complex. But this is just a way for managers to easily manage people. So it's a useful yardstick and not a hyper accurate measure and it allows you to categorize different people in different ways. So the big five stands for openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, neuroticism, right? So conscientiousness and there are endpoints and the endpoints are basically you can either be low conscientiousness or high conscientiousness. So people who are high conscientiousness and conscientiousness is basically, you know, hardworking or diligent. So they're organized, they're careful and they're disciplined. And people who are low conscientiousness are disorganized, careless and impulsive. And you don't need to lie on you know, one end of the spectrum, you could lie somewhere in between. For example, when it comes to conscientiousness and the sub points, which are organization, carefulness and discipline, I am, for example, a very disorganized person, right? And I'm actually a very careful person, right? But I'm also, you know, I can flip between discipline and I can flip between impulsive. It really depends on the situation. But in most cases, I am a disciplined person, right? So conscientiousness is about where do you generally lie, right? The endpoints are not about where you lie all the time, depending on your mood. It's about how you generally are as a person. Agreeableness, you are either a soft-hearted, trusting and helpful person, or you could be ruthless, suspicious and uncooperative, right? Anxious behaviors, right? Non-agreeable behaviors. In fact, so the theory says that, you know, the less agreeable you are, the more you get ahead in life. But that's, that's again, you know, it means that you're just not a pushover. So you might think that soft-hearted and trusting and helpful is a good thing. But in this case, the soft-hearted, trusting and helpful actually means that you might also become gullible. So too much on the soft-hearted, trusting and helpful side, and you're a gullible person, right? You're just, you say yes to everything. And saying yes to everything gets you nowhere. Most successful people say no to everything, right? They're on the other side. They're less agreeable. So agreeableness is about how often you say yes and how often you say no. And the more agreeable you are, the more likely you are to say yes. The less agreeable you are, the more likely you say no and be skeptic, skeptical about things and also be a little bit more uncooperative, right? And uncooperative in this, in this sense doesn't mean bad uncooperative. It means that if somebody random comes up to you and asks you to do something, you're going to say, no, boy, I'm not going to do it. You're going to say, no, I'm not going to do it because you haven't given me enough of a reason to. The next thing is neuroticism, right? So people are either calm or they're anxious. They're either secure or they're insecure. They're either self-satisfied or self-pitying, right? And neuroticism, again, it depends on, you know, it's a, it's a function of how anxious you get in, in general about situations. And, you know, I am a slightly anxious person and that's because uh, my mother used to be anxious, but in the last one or two years, this dimension has shifted. I'm a little more calm. I'm a little more self-satisfied. Um, but there's still this little bit of anxiety that pushes me to to do the next thing, right? To, uh, you know, after this, probably I want to do medicine or I want to do something else beyond it. And that anxiety actually gets things done. In fact, anxiety is a useful trait, right? A, a lot of anxiety and you're paralyzed. But a little bit of anxiety, a little bit of anxiety moves you ahead in life because that's the only thing that gets things done, right? The next thing is openness. So, You're either an imaginative person who wants variety, who's independent, or you're practical, you prefer routine, you prefer to wake up at a particular time, sleep at a particular time, and you're conforming, right? You listen to what other people say. And what I've seen in my own practice is that, you know, I'm I'm obviously very, uh, I scored very high on openness. I'm generally an imaginative person. I like, you know, variety, and I'm generally independent and I'm non-conforming. And on the other end, you know, I, I, I know a lot of people who, you know, love a routine. They, they want to be practical. They want to be somewhere on time. Um, you know, at 8 a.m. in the morning, they want to wake up or 6 a.m. or something and they want to stick to a routine. And those people are generally a little less open, right? They're also a little less imaginative. Then there's extroversion. There's, you know, you're either sociable, you're fun loving, you're affectionate, you know, you, you like, you know, you like people. And the other one, uh, on the other side, you're sober, you're reserved, you know, you, you tend not to hang out with other people. And again, this is, 
a little bit situational, right? Because in all of this, you'll realize in the ocean model, it's situational. So you could have a certain ocean model in the company you're working at. And once you get promoted, you might have a different ocean model and you might have a particular ocean model in that company. But the minute you move to a different company, you might exhibit different signs in a different role. So you have to find what you want to be like, right? In different situations. And you can always take the test there. There's a test there. And this is not about how you feel in a particular moment. This is how you generally are, right? So social, especially social media, what people don't realize is that it's a mining field, right? And you guys have probably seen these, the idea of psychographics. So not just do we pick out as, as advertisers, not just uh, are people picking out simple things like, you know, their likes and, you know, their interests and age, where advertisers are also taking in more things, right? And as advertisers ourselves, we know we take these things. We, we, are, we try to psychograph a person. What is this person like, right? What is their, where do they lie on openness? Where do they lie on agreeableness? Where do they lie on all of these different elements, right? What is their intelligence? How, how, how satisfied are they with life, right? Then their political views, their religious views, their sexuality and their profession, right? And we, we tend not to look at their political or religious views or sexuality. We don't as a company, as, as Avalon, we don't, um, work with companies that target people based on these three things because we just, you know, we think it's going to be a problem four or five years later. And if we want to become a big brand, we can, we can just strike that off because that will eventually cause problems. So we stick with things like intelligence, life satisfaction, profession, and the ocean model, right? What is a personality like? And then there's the idea of age. Right? How old are these people? What is their gender? What is their relationship status? This, this is something that's been done for a very long time. So ocean is also very correlated with work success. And the reason I'm telling you all of this is because you are actually being profiled as you speak. As, as I speak and all your activity on social, you're actually being profiled into the ocean model. There are, there are apps right now that can take, if you have enough of a Twitter history or enough of an Instagram history, depending on the words you've used, we can, those apps can tell whether, where you fall in the ocean model. And those apps aren't fully accurate, but if they have a lot of data, if you've, for somebody like me with a lot of data out there on the internet, these apps are fairly accurate. They're scarily accurate. And the more data you continue to put out, and my assumption is that humans are just going to keep putting out more and more content on the internet, the easier it is for an app to just pick you up and say, Hey, this person is neurotic or this, this person is, you know, this much percent anxious or displays those signs and those products are marketed to you. So it's, it's getting scary. And I want to give you the tools to be able to defend yourself, to understand that this is going on as we speak. So your openness, in, in terms of work, the more open you are, uh, you're more proactive, you come up with new ideas, you come up with, you try experiments, and you'll take up projects by yourself. So I know that a lot of reasons I've taken up these projects because I am an open person, right? I'm more imaginative. Then there's the idea of agreeableness, which is uh, the more agreeable you are, the more likely you are to not get promoted because everybody's just going to give you work and you're going to say yes. And that's a problem, right? So the less agreeable you are, the more you you move up in the career uh, and you're less proactive. You're, you're less likely to say yes to somebody and do what they want. Extroversion, extroversion is less proficient. You know, people who are really extroverted don't spend too much time on a computer learning skills. They don't spend time alone. Um, and, but they are most dominant socially, right? So they're extroverted people are, make really good salespeople. In fact, in my life, I've been introverted for a very long time. And I only started becoming extroverted maybe a year, year, year and a half ago because I changed social circles. So that really matters. Then there's conscientiousness, which is how diligent you are. How hardworking are you? How willing are you to stick with one thing for a long time? And that's positively associated with work performance for obvious reasons. The harder you work, the more likely you are to stick with something. You're obviously going to do better at work, right? Then there's the idea of neuroticism. The more anxious you are, the more negatively you are associated with work performance. But Anxiety, you need a little bit of neuroticism to actually get anything done. People who score very low on, on this neuroticism scale, who are very satisfied and calm. So once people get into positions of power who have zero neuroticism or who are very calm and satisfied, uh, they often don't look at the next thing, right? They, so, so there's no anxiety or, or there's no nothing driving them to go and do the next thing. The motivation is still there. They want to do amazing things, but it's that anxiety of, hey, if I don't do it, somebody else is going to do it. If that isn't there, then you're not going to keep getting ahead. These people get comfortable with life and that's okay, right? It's for everybody to decide what they want to do with their lives. But you know, the long-term comfort, it's not for me. And it's, you know, you should think about whether it's for you or not. There's nothing wrong with calling it a day and saying, Hey, I've reached here. It's an amazing place. Here's where I draw the line. Right? So, so that's it for this video. You know, uh, there is a reason that, you know, we've cut this, cut this management series shorter. We were actually planning to have a much longer series. And in the next video, I'll address why.